Hello, my name is Ray Sutton. This is going to be an instructional video on how to install the T-Rex billet throttle on the KTM 85. This bike is a 2021 and the uh, throttles and, and cables are uh, more problematic than they've been in the past. So I'm installing this to uh, make things easier. Um, first thing you're going to do is take off the seat and then you're going to expose a bolt underneath the seat to the fuel tank that secures the fuel tank to the frame. That's an 8mm. Take that out and there's going to be two 8mm here in the front to release these side shrouds or side plastics um, from, these, uh, from the coolers. And then you're going to close the fuel valve or this pet cock valve underneath the tank and then disconnect that hose and then the fuel tank will come off. Um, so let's get started on that. So first thing we're going to take off the, uh, the seat and there's an 8mm bolt underneath here. I like to put the bolt back in the seat so I don't lose the bolt. And then set it aside. Um, the next thing is two bolts here in the front that secure these shrouds to the coolers or radiators, whatever you want to call them. And I just drop those bolts straight down on the floor so I know where they came from. Then there's a center bolt right here on the fuel tank that secures the fuel tank to the frame. And I'm using an 8mm T handle. It's just easier. I'm going to take that bolt, set it down. Then I'm going to close this fuel valve that's already, or the petcock valve underneath the uh, fuel tank that's already closed. And I'm going to take that hose off. You'll get a little bit of fuel drip, but not a big deal. Um, and then there's a vent line going into the triple clamp up here. Let's get that loose. And now you're going to kind of just wiggle it and pull these side shrouds off. Now your fuel tank's off. The next thing we're going to do is an unboxing, if you will, of the parts you're going to get from T-Rex. Um, first thing you need to get is this, this cable. That is, uh, it's got a Teflon insert and it's pretty nice. Then you're going to get this, uh, this throttle. Okay, next we're gonna remove the twist throttle and cable from the bike. So up here you have two eight millimeters, loosen those up, slide that off, and we're gonna take this cable off all the way down to the carburetor. And you got to open up the top of the carburetor and there's a, a Phillips screw on each side. They're a, they're a soft metal, so be careful and use the right Phillips screwdriver in here. Um, the one I like to use is about this size. All right, next we're gonna loosen up the carburetor so you can wiggle it and move it around a little bit. This is the easier way to do it without lifting the subframe um, and taking the intake boot off um, to get the whole carburetor out of here. You don't need to do that. So I'm gonna loosen up each clamp on the side of the carburetor. Well, it's actually loose already because I'm doing this video. So it's got a little bit of wiggle room. Now I'm gonna take that screwdriver and uh, get to these top side screws that once again are pretty soft so be careful hold the screwdriver pretty secure and then take them out I'm gonna set them right here you obviously want to do this when the bike is pretty clean so you're less susceptible to drop dirt and debris down into the carburetor that's on top of it or everywhere else, right? Okay, now I can take the top side out and get this fuel hose out of the way. Now this thing does have a gasket on it. Okay, we're replacing this cable, so stand by. Okay, the next step is to remove the, or free the cable from the, the carburetor. So what I like to do is kind of just bring this spring up, and then I take some type of needle nose pliers, and then kind of compress the spring. 
and then grip the cable. So once you do that, then you have room in here to fish stuff around and uh, get it in and out. So I'm gonna put this right here. And that slide, this little plastic piece can only go in one way. So it's round on one side and tapered on the other. So all when you put the new cable back in, all you're doing is getting this little end piece through this plastic piece and in a little notch right there. That's all it's doing. And then that plastic piece just is a, is like a retainer so that little crimped end can't get out. All right, next we're going to keep removing this cable. So you're going to take this rubber boot, try to lift it up somehow without cutting it and messing it up. And it looks like there's a 10 millimeter right there to loosen that up. Okay, I've got a 10 millimeter here, which is it. So you see that little 10 millimeter right there? I'm gonna loosen that up. Unscrew that. I still have my spring retained. That wasn't supposed to happen, but there really isn't too many parts here. Um, you got the top side cap and then a spring. Um, so put this right here. Now the cable's free and I can take this cable out or off the bike and then install the new cable. So here's the new cable we're gonna install. Um, the gold side is gonna be top side on the, on, the, on the twist throttle and this side with the smaller crimped in is gonna be down by the carburetor. Okay, next we're gonna assemble the top side of this carburetor. So you're bringing this cable through um, and you're putting the spring back on this top clamp. Let's take your needle nose pliers and make this easier. Actually, with this long cable, you probably don't need it. So we'll put that to the side. So on this plastic piece, you can see that black ring. That's where the, uh, the spring used to sit, this metal spring. So the bigger side of the cup of the, or bigger cup side of this plastic piece is going to be on the bottom when the smaller is going to be on the top. And you're going to notice in this plastic piece, there's a notch. So there's a hole in a notch. That notch is going to be on the side where this little crimped in fits. So there's only one way you can put this on or put the plastic piece down in there anyways. Now, since this new style cable doesn't, isn't connected to the the twist throttle yet, you're gonna have a little slack down here. So try to keep this a little compressed, if you will. And make sure your gasket is nice and clean, which mine is. So now we're gonna feed this back into the carburetor. And, it ought, and it's only gonna go in one way, in one orientation. It's gonna go in this way. Putting these screws in the sides. And you don't want to over torque these screws because once again, they are soft metal and they get stripped out pretty easily. I always have a couple new ones on standby 
in the event that they start getting a little rounded off. So, tightening these up a little bit. Pretty tight, but once again, don't strip them out. Keep that screwdriver square. And then try to bring this rubber piece down a little bit. It won't go over the nut, which is fine. So I'm gonna tighten this up later, and I'm gonna get to the uh, twist throttle up top side. That's next. All right, next we're gonna run the cable into this twist throttle. Um, the tools to adjust this twist throttle and install it are gonna be an eight millimeter box wrench, a four millimeter Allen, and a 2.5 millimeter Allen. So first we'll take off this view window and the bearing. Take the bearing out, run this cable in here, twist that up, okay so you can twist the, the out the inside and then you have a retaining nut right there so this is adjustment and that's just going to lock it down once you get it into its final adjustment so let's run the crimp in in there so it's going to fit right you're going to rotate that right there get that in there it's going to fit like that all right so let's drop the bearing in there you obviously want this cable through this channel on the outside of the bearing, or inside bearing, if you will. So, the cable's rotating the bearing, and it's not on the other side of the bearing or this side of the bearing, it's in that groove. Let's put this window back on. Feels so easy. Okay, the rest of it should be to loosen up these four millimeter cap head screws on the bottom. Slide it on. Oh, inside there is an O-ring for a nice fit to keep debris and pressure washing out of this throttle tube when you're cleaning your bike, but obviously it is open through the bars. So this side, don't any debris or water that comes from this left side through the bar is gonna get into here. So be careful what you do on this side with cleaning and debris and all that. So that O-ring is a pretty dang good fit. That is nice. So you want to move it on there all the way and it appears you can go all the way and it doesn't man i mean the ease of that and then the snap back so clearly this type of system has such a low resistance as opposed to the oem stuff that it just lets the spring that's on the top side of that carburetor do its job that's why it snaps back so quick um, yeah, this is definitely better. So from here, um, how you adjust the, the cable tension is, uh, is a preference, if you will. Um, the OEM is going to tell you to have a little bit of slop in there. They're telling you that so you don't make this cable too tight and that 
when you start the bike up, it's at a higher RPM, put it in gear and the bike takes off. It's kind of a safety thing. So what I like to do is, uh, is I'll adjust it till it's loose. So run this, run this in so it's nice and loose. So you know you're not pulling the cable. So when you look at that cable on that view window, you know you're making it tight or pulling it, All right? So right there it's loose. Now I'm pulling it. So I want to bring it out a little bit. I'm just going to make it just a little snug. Not loose, not tight. So now I should be able to lock that down and possibly not adjust it anymore. I'm just going to take some small channel locks and kind of put a little tension on it, but not, not too much, just a little bit. Enough to where it doesn't get loose. So bring this rubber boot over and now you're going to tighten down this on the handlebars depending on where you know you want this uh and once again that's a preference thing i'm going to set mine about right there um once again this is the first time i ever installed this system so i might tweak it later on uh but i mean you can get it on there as far as you want and uh there's no resistance that is really really nice so let me lock this down. These two four millimeter bolts on the bottom. Okay, before I put the fuel tank and seat back on and fasten up the carburetor with the two clamps that I left loose earlier. I'm going to make sure this cow cable is routed nicely. Uh, the way the other one's routed is right with the, uh, the clutch cable. So KTM gives you this little plastic retaining clip to hold both cables together. I would use that because it's going to kind of fit in here in this area, not right here because the fuel tank will be squeezing it. Once you squeeze, once you put it down, kind of, Kind of get it just a little bit lower than this frame angle right here, about right there. That's like a perfect spot. You can see where the old cable wore, right there. Um, uh, I think that's about it. Um, all right, now I'm gonna lock down the two side clamps on the carburetor. And on these carburetors, um, there is an orientation of level. On the aft end next to the, or the, the aft end next to the reeds, there's a little notch on the carburetor and in on that rubber boot. Make sure that little notch fits in there. Not on the side or this side, not on that side, but right there in the middle. You can tell there's a little notch. Um, and then tighten down these with the eight millimeter socket. Not too tight, because you'll mess these things up. Not that tight. And it's good to have these clamps new as spares when you tighten them too tight. Um, make sure the cable isn't too bound anywhere. It looks good. Now we're going to put on the fuel tank and the seat. When I'm putting my fuel, oops, make sure this cable is down a little bit. You don't want it on the side because once again, it's going to get pinched by the fuel tank. So kind of set it down just under that frame, under this frame angle right there. So first thing I think about is this stud lining up with this hole in the tank. So I kind of start lining that up, but you also got to pull these shrouds out so they go around each radiator. Kind of stuff it down a little bit. And then you'll get to these shrouds up on the radiator and you'll notice you'll have to kind of pull them out and 
bring them to the front because they don't line up perfectly. Make sure this plastic's in there. And now make sure your cables, it has, if it's free, it's not pinched by this tank on the frame. So now I'm gonna put this bolt back in. Not too tight. Put the two shroud bolts back in. Be careful with these, you can strip these out pretty easily, especially if you're using a bunch of impact stuff. Get these a little pretty snug, but not overly tight, because you'll strip them out pretty easily. Stuff the, the uh, fuel tank vent back into your triple clamp hole. Um, I love these aftermarket pads, the ones they come with. Pretty stiff. Now I'm going to put the fuel line back on the fuel tank that comes from the carburetor and turn the petcock on. Found my screw because I left it in the seat. Putting the seat back on. And that is about it. Um, let's see if it fires up and acts right. I still have one more to do on that bike, and that's the Super Mini I'll be riding tomorrow. So we're definitely testing these out. And on grips, um, with the COVID thing, everything's sold out, but my son likes the half waffles. This is about the only color that we can get right now that wasn't super weird. I wanted black, but couldn't get those. And with these, I would suggest using some type of grip glue that's similar to a, uh, For grips, uh, my son likes the half waffles. Um, this is about the only color we can get right now. Um, for grip glue, we like the stuff from these grip manufacturers. Um, it's very similar to a contact cement, but it's definitely uh, different. So don't use contact cement. And uh, yeah, put the grips on. So for adjustments on this, you're gonna have a throttle limit for kids, where you can limit the throttle right there or the full open throttle. Um, on my kid's bike, he's not gonna need that. And then you have the cable insert, and you're just gonna wanna verify that this set screw, wanna verify that. So just verify that this set screw is tight. And top side's a little tight, and that's about it. So I have 10 hours now on this throttle and I'm very happy with it. Um, and just for reference, this is how I have it set up. So if you just barely start to crack the throttle, it's gonna, you can see the cable moving and right there, it's gonna start moving the cable, right? So it's definitely not too tight and it's definitely not loose. Um, so with this plastic view window, when you pressure wash, you're gonna get a little water past that, uh, that plastic view window. And all I do after I pressure wash and bring it in here and change oil and adjust the chain and all that is just take that off and then take a little cotton swab and mop out that little hole right there that'll have a little moisture in it.